So welcome back to this rather delayed episode of Big Dan's Air Guns. I'm glad to have you with us. Today we're going to be looking at yet another PCP in the Cometa line, and that is the Cometa Lynx SPR. Now this is the regulated version, and this is also the V5 SPR, as you can probably see by the fact it has a much smaller air cylinder on there than what you'll be getting with the V10, which we will be reviewing separately, simply because they're basically designed with two different purposes in mind. This is the what I would consider more hunting version of the Lynx, and the V10 with that monstrous bottle on the front end is more of the target gun. But enough of that. As always, you know how this goes. We're going to be looking at features, we're going to be looking at consistency through the chrono, and obviously we're going to be looking at accuracy testing as well. So enough jabbering from the lips, and let's get this show on the road. Let's take a look at features. Okay, so features of the Cometa Lynx SPR, what do we think? At the rear you have a rubber recoil pad, something that uh, I would hope you would get on an 850 pound gun. Slightly further along you have an adjustable cheek piece which is ambidextrous, which is a genuinely nice feature. The stock itself is beech, I've seen a few publications out there saying it's walnut, I really don't think it is. If you just take a look at that grain, she's definitely a beech stock especially when you, it's actually quite nice. If you look back here, you can see it's quite nicely finished and such on there. Cometa do have a way of doing beach stocks that really do pop, um, but she's not walnut, at least in my opinion. Slightly further along from there, you can see we have some checkering, which again, in tune with the other Cometas, is really deep and nicely done. They do have a really good sense of attention when it comes to doing their stocks. And you can see here the Lynx logo, which is printed in. Another nice little feature, if we go to the base of the grip. Hopefully you can see that. There's also the Cometa logo stamped in there as well. It is, obviously it's going to be a bit Marmite to most. It's not a spring gun. I do prefer the looks of my springers, but it is a pretty gun. Slightly further up and on the other side, you can see the side lever, which is the how you, you cock this rifle. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the handling section. Sorry about that. They're stuttering. I was trying to find the chair, <laughs> but we'll talk a bit more about that when we get to the handling section. For slightly further down, you can see the trigger. This is a two-stage adjustable unit, which can be adjusted for pull weight and length of pull at the same time. Hopefully you can see there's another screw hole there inside of the trigger unit itself. Hopefully you can also now see the safety, which I'm a big fan of, which crosses the entire width of the trigger and then some. So it's nice to use for lefties and right-handed shooters. The other thing I'm gonna mention is the trigger and trigger guard, thank God, is 100% metal. We've got no plastic there whatsoever. Slightly further up and left, we have the barrel. Now, the barrel on this is Cometa's own Cold Hammer Forge unit, which so far seems to be a stonking barrel from the test we've done so far. Again, barrels can be funny creatures, so we're not going to say too much about that until we actually get testing it. But it's a nice thing to have on the checklist, I'll put it that way. Slightly further down, you have the air pressure gauge on the left side of the gun, so you don't have to look down the barrel to see what pressure you're doing, and you don't have to roll the gun upside down like some of the bottle-fed guns to see what you've got left turn the gun sideways, you know what you've got. And in there somewhere, you've also got a Robert Lane regulator, which is definitely nothing to turn your nose up. The fact you're getting that out of the box is a very, very nice thing to have indeed. Slightly further along, we also have the bottle. Now this is quite small. If you can see there, that's actually a protector covering it. You might be able to best see it that way. It's a very, very small bottle. It's about 220 cc, so your Crow jumbo bottle and such like that, your day state bottles will dwarf this, but it'll be interesting to see how many shots we can squeeze out of that. And on the end here, as you can tell, you do get the silencer as this is the SPR version. Other things worth mentioning, which is nice, you have the fill probe, which is built into the gun, so you haven't got to hunt around for your probe. You also have studs on the front and rear, so you can easily chuck a bipod on the front end if you wanted to, or you can chuck a sling on there. Like I said, I think the sling could be a good option for this. I see this more of the hunting links and the V10 with that huge 500cc bottle being the target links. But you never know, we'll see how it gets on. It might only be a paperweight if it doesn't shoot very well. We'll see that a little bit later on, see how she does. But that's it for features, except you also get Cometa's lifetime warranty with these. We're handed this through ASI. Any Cometa that comes through our doors is given the lifetime warranty treatment. So it is a more expensive gun, possibly the most expensive we've had on this channel so far. But if it ever goes wrong, it will always be fixed for you. And that is a lovely thing to have no matter what it is. But overall, that is the features for the, or those are the features I should say, for the Cometa Lynx SPR Mark II. Now let's get the weights out and see just how heavy Cometa's lightweight Lynx really is. 
Okay, so she's on the scales and she comes out at 7.02 pounds. So for a bottle gun, she's definitely on the lighter end of the spectrum, especially when you consider she is definitely a full length gun, if you can see that there. So we know what we're dealing with weight wise now, but how does that feel when it's actually put to the shoulder? Well, before we look at that, let's crack the mag out and see what these are all about. Okay, so how on earth do we load this thing? Thankfully, it's actually not too bad. Now, it is one we have to spin the disc all the way around, like so. And what that does is you might see there's a rubber toggle there. Now, if we didn't spin that around, that would be blocking off the first pellet hole. So literally, you spin that around and you load the first pellet, skirt first, into the rear, like so. Now, that will lock that toggle in place so you can then load every pellet nose first through the top like that until you're done. The other thing that I do quite like about this is, although it is more finicky than loading some of the mags straight through the top, there's no denying that, but what Cometa have done is they designed it in such a way that you may have seen when we spun it around, the, the plastic plate was still covering the, um, the first pellet hole from this side. So there's no risk of loading the pellet through here and having it shoot straight out the back like some of them can do, like uh, I believe the Crown mags off memory, you can have that happen. You have to sort of block the hole with your thumb or something like that. Silly little feature, but something that is quite nice that they designed it that way. I'll put it that way, a creature comfort. But overall, not too bad. So let's get this loaded, put it in the gun, and then put the gun to the shoulder and see what we think. Okay, so the Cometa Lynx SPR, what does it feel like when it's in the shoulder? Well, first thing we're gonna look at is how you load the mag. So first thing you're gonna wanna do, pull that side lever back, and you'll notice there's a bar running the length of the breech there and your mag has got a set of jaws off the corner. And what you're going to do is just put that through the breech and those jaws, if you can see that, hopefully, will be wrapping around that bar. You're just going to give that a little bit more of a push and she's locked in place. Now, to some people that might seem a little bit like a faff. I mean, some of the mags on the guns we've tried in this channel, you literally just slide it in and that's it. The thing is though, this is ideally a hunting gun. And why that's good is because if you're out at say pitch black, you've got your night vision gear, you're not gonna pull that back and then the mag's gonna slip out. And I don't know if anyone else watching this has lost a mag while they're out in the field. It's not a fun time when you're looking through basically darkness and you're trying to find a little, little plastic or metal thing that's about this big. And unfortunately mags these days aren't cheap either. So it can ruin your night, I'll put it that way. But Overall handling wise, I mean, it feels quite nice in the shoulder. One thing I will mention is there's actually, despite how big the gun might look, there's not a lot of real estate on the forestock. I've got really big hands, but you'll see I'm sort of pulling in a little bit to the point where my hand is almost pretty much touching the trigger guard back here. Now granted, obviously you've got the bipod stud in there anyway, and most people are gonna use this as an ambush position. So at which point you're not gonna have any issues with it. but. I mean, again, you could, this gun is light. You could use this as a hunter and it just, with my hands, just feels a little bit funky. I'll put it that way. You can't go much further forwards because you've got the bipod stud there and you've also got the fill port area here. So it just feels a bit weird, that gap on your fingers, especially when you see the checkering is here. So ideally you want your hands back here. On the more positive side, because we're nitpicking a little bit there, but it's worth mentioning, the more positive side is it does feel lovely. The gun, again, through the scales, it wasn't much. It was about seven pounds dead, wasn't it? So it's pretty much a light middleweight, we'll call it. But I've actually cheated against the gun a little bit here, and I've put the rather large Conus Empire 3 to 18 by 50. This is not the scope I'd put on this if I was hunting. Again, I'm not knocking the, the Empire. The Empire is a bloody amazing scope. I'd put the T30 Compact on there because I would not personally use this as an ambush gun. This is so light and well balanced, despite how long it looks, I would use this as a walked up hunter. So walk around, you see something and you quickly pop and off you go. Even with this big scope, it's light. I mean, you wouldn't see me doing that with an Aerocobra any day soon, I'll put it that way. It's a light gun. You compare this even to a similar sort of designed or styled gun, something like a I know it's much cheaper, but a Wolf the Rotex. This is a much nicer handling gun than that. And I'm not knocking the Rotex, it's a great gun. But this is something completely different. If I had to give a description as to how this feels, and obviously this won't mean much because not everybody's shouldered one of these. If you've got a BSA R10, it feels like a more Spanishified R10. <laughs> it's the only way that I can really describe that. It does feel very much so like an R10 to shoulder. 
Again, the checkering is nice and deep. You know, we say about stripper rules on some of the guns where you can see the checkering, but you just don't really feel it. On this, she's a very friendly stripper. You can, you can look and touch at the same time. It's nice and deep. You can even get the imprint on your fingers and thumbs when you're done with it. It's nicely finished. Now let's talk about the actual important stuff though. Let's go trigger. So let's whack that safety off, take aim. More of a single stage than a two stage. Um, I didn't feel much of a two stage there. Now granted, I've not adjusted this out of the box. You might be able to see the adjustment screw on the rear here from factory is pretty much all the way out. So you could definitely put a bit more into that and make it more of a second stage on there. To be honest, I love a single stage trigger. So I actually really like how that feels. The other thing I like is, although you can hear the mag cycling, if you notice when I cock it, you're not getting a click like some of the guns on the market. That, I don't know what they're rocking in there, but that is a seriously slick system. It feels like some of the very expensive guns, like some of the FXs and such that I've shot, where it's just a, and there's no real sound. It's a lovely, slick, well-oiled machine, what they've got running in there. Let's give that another go. Something else I want you to pay attention to as well. A lot of guns on the market, especially in the UK, obviously we're limited to 12 feet pounds, where the guns are quite heavily choked and things like that. They're, they're not... If I'm being brutally honest, they're not running at the full potential at our power level. I think most people abroad will probably agree with that. But you tell me if you can hear any hammer bounce or anything like that with this gun. Ready? Nothing. All you're getting is that out the end of the barrel. And speaking about on the end of the barrel, that silencer is actually a genuinely pretty kick-ass bit of kit. The other thing that I'll mention is it's not a glued on jobby like you can get sometimes and it is a proper half inch UNF thread on there so even if you don't like the standard Cometa silencer that comes with the gun you can put your own one on there anyway. I don't think you need to to be brutally honest because that is actually bloody quiet. Let me bring that a little bit closer. Okay so I've got the lapel mic as close as I would like to get to the end of the barrel and you have a little listen. I'm just going to shoot into this log pile here. Ready? The main noise you just heard was the piece of wood that we hit about two and a half, three feet away. Overall, that is a really nicely figured gun. And I think someone for who's going to use it for walked up shooting, all that sort of thing. It's a hunting rifle is what it is really. If you're going to use it for that sort of thing, I think you're going to be a really, really happy chappy. But it has got that bottle on the end. Don't get me wrong. It's a smaller one, but a bottle's a bottle. So why don't we see what she's doing through the chrono? And let's see, I don't know, maybe the target shooters might like it as well. We'll have to take a look. So we'll get the chronograph out, put a few shots through. Then after that, we'll get into the real meat and potatoes of everything. We'll set a few targets up at, say, if we can, 40 yards and see what she can do down range. So uh, let's get to work. OK, then, so chronograph time. The rifle has been filled up to 200 bar, more or less, as you can hopefully see on the gauge there. The pellets we're going to be using are the FX 16 grain 22s. And as always, we're going to have the camera set up so as it's staring directly into the screen here of the phone. So you'll get a live reading as to what the gun's doing. So that's enough of that. Let's put the gun through its paces and see how she does. Okay, so that's consistency testing out of the way. Uh, overall, we got 80 full power shots. Like we said, this is the baby version, so I wasn't exactly expecting 200 or anything like that out of it. It's maybe 
Mind you, that's what the V10's for. I was going to say, it's maybe a bit low compared to what you might have expected. To be fair though, this is, like we said, it is a very small bottle on here. And on top of that, it is the, I'd call it the hunting version of the Lynx, where if you've got the V10, which has got the huge, I believe it's a 500cc bottle on the front end, which is going to be the target version. What I will say is consistency wise, she was pretty good. We had a spread, obviously there it says 24, but obviously we shoot it until it starts running down. We had a spread of roughly, was it 22 feet per second? 20-ish feet per second. Um, and standard deviation was around 4.4, I believe, going off memory. What I will say though is, I'm gonna go off on a little mini tangent here. I do apologize and I apologize also if I offend anybody with my views now. Um, we was using, as you know, the FX JSB-esque sort of pellet. I, I had a few comments saying use JSB for chrono testing and such like that and th there was a reason why I didn't do that and I might have even replied to a couple of comments saying why. You might notice the shot per second on this is a bit lower than what it is usually. You won't see much in the video because we fast forward everything. My videos are bloody long enough anyway. I don't want to make you sit and watch me in real time shoot the chrono through. Um, but yeah, I've had to sieve through to find pellets that are actually semi-acceptable to put through the gun. Now I've not weighed them because don't get me wrong, I don't blame people for weighing them. You, you might even get a much more accurate result as to what the gun can truly do. Obviously, I'm not going to sit here and weigh potentially 200 pellets. i um, a bit too busy for that. But um, we tend to do it straight from the tin. Because one, it's interesting to see what the pellets are up to these days. And two, it's a more fair representation of an in-the-field shooting gun. Most hunters don't weigh the pellets when they go out. They take a few from the tin and off they go. Unfortunately, with this, I had to really sieve through to find pellets that I would have deemed acceptable. In fact, if you take a look, you can see there's a rather nasty one looking at you there. The skirts on these, this particular tin, are pretty atrocious. Um, hopefully you can see there's a few there. There's this one here that's sort of more square than anything else. Not coming out that great on the camera. You can see there's an oval one sitting there. There's a couple that are completely squished. I mean, look at that one. I had to sieve through and find ones that worked. I know there's guys out there that say, the skirts will open up. Jesus Christ, I've just found another one, which is, this deserves its own mention. Jesus. Um, yeah, I know there's people out there that say the skirts will open up when the blast of air hits the skirt of the pellet, basically making misshapes kind of pointless to complain about. I don't believe that, and I think we've seen that pretty much today. For instance, we know the rifle's consistent because when we did get a couple of pellets that were behaving, I mean, look, 11.46, 11.46, 11.46. This is when I'm sorting through them. The first few I weren't, and this can't be power bleeding off because it was under, or it might have been the 10th. Yeah, it was, it was the 10th shot. She's above 11, then all of a sudden you get a random 10.9. And you might have noticed when we was testing it, there you go, you would get another one, 10.87. Sorry, it was a bit high, 10.87. Now we don't usually get that when we use other pellets. And just for a comparison, you might have noticed even before we was filming, there was a tin of, oh, put the tin upside down, but we had a tin of superfields off the side. That was if we had absolutely atrocious results with these and I would have had to have filmed it again. Now you saw the tin of JSBs. Take a look at these for comparison. Now again, I'm not slagging off JSB FX pellets, not at all. I'd even say on average, they're more pellet friendly than what the superfields are. In fact, I'd say that in confidence. Again, not knocking RWS now. When they find a barrel they like, they're lasers, but JSB just that I don't know they just seem to work I'll put it that way but when it comes to looking at the skirts there's absolutely no comparison between the two these are properly made form skirts that's why we had some very low dodgy shots and that's why the shots per second or minute whatever it is is a bit lower because I was having to sieve through and find ones that were acceptable so sorry if you notice any irregularities in the video and sorry for going off on a mini tangent um, I would rather from now on test pet rifles using either HN or RWS pellets, but if you want us to continue with JSB, I will do so. But it might take even longer for the reviews to come out because I've pretty much got no other choice but to weigh them, essentially, and pick the ones out that are any good. But again, enough of potentially pissing off massive pellet manufacturers. <laughs> uh, let's move on now to accuracy testing. So I'm fairly confident the consistency, even with those pellets, isn't really going to affect accuracy. And like I said, JSB type pellets are accurate downrange, there's no denying. We're going to set the target up at 40 yards and we're going to see what she can do. We might start, say, 25 yards first, get a rough idea, then move on to 40 and see what happens. So we'll see how she behaves. But sorry about that, but um, it sort of needed a little bit of clearing up in case you noticed something was a little bit funky going on with the video. Thanks, fellas, and we'll see you again in two ticks.
test, as you can, I'm sure you can see maybe from the title when we was testing the gun, we was using RWS Superfields straight from the tin. If you can see that there, that is the, I think it's about a quarter full tin from yesterday when we was having a play with it. And that is the fresh tin that we've opened. So straight from the tin, no weighing, nothing like that. And the gun already is doing a hell of a lot better. If we go to the bottom, you can see here, we had one slightly high shot at 11.55. Regulated guns, most of them will do that from a fresh, fresh fill, air can seep into the regulator and then the first maybe one to five shots, it will dump that excess air and then it will settle and be fine. That's what we saw here. We had a overall, until it started bleeding off, as you can see, we shot the thing until it gave up and even so, it's got a better standard deviation than a lot of the guns we've tested on this channel, even with the bleed off shots included. We had overall an average, I believe, standard deviation of probably around 2.7, 2.8, something like that. It did creep up to the 2.9s um, as we was approaching that 80th shot, but it was consistently, I believe, sub three. Spread was 15 FPS, but here's something I'm gonna show you. If you eliminate that first shot at 5.72, the next hottest shot is 5.57, or 5.77, apologies. Um, 567, cool, I'll get it right in a minute. 567, there you go, if you can see those two there. They was the next hottest shot. I can't see a 568 or 569 anywhere, as far as I can see. But if we keep going, the next lowest shot in the 80s is, there's a 557, there he is. In fact, there's two of them, 557, 557, which is still just sub 11 feet pounds. If we would have not had that first hot shot, we would have had a spread of 10. And even now, you can see there, it's even with the bleed off, it's 3.88, which is still a bloody good result, considering out of the box or out of the tin pellets. Uh, if you had any doubts that this gun was, had consistency issues or wasn't particularly great when it came to consistency from the first test that we did, which I will include in the review so we can see the difference and see what I'm talking about when I say I take so super fields through the chrono over JSB, um, but you can see there is a huge improvement and that the gun is wickedly consistent to go with it. But that's it for our consistency test or our second one. I'm not gonna waste any more time on that. If we can, we wanna get this review done before Christmas. <laughs> the way things are going, I don't know if that might be the case. It's been a while between reviews. Right, we're gonna set some targets up now. Um, I don't know what range is just yet. The wind is a bit on and off at this moment in time. My back's to it and hopefully the lapel mic's cutting it off. But we're going to get the gun filled back up. We're going to do some off-screen accuracy testing, see which pellet it groups the best with. And then we're going to st stick some targets up and see how we do. So enough of this. Let's get her juiced up. I'll do the hard work behind the uh, off-camera for you. And then uh, we'll see what she can do. Okay, so it's accuracy testing time. We've had a few shots off screen to see which pellets the rifle liked the best. Now, we tried quite a fair few. We tried the Superfields, which although great through the chrono, it absolutely hated at range. Uh, we tried the FX pellets, FX or JSB-esque, we'll call it. We tried some of the new SMK Spitfires, the Rifle Premium Domes. We had some of the JSB Exact RS, but the pellets it absolutely adores the humble Crossman Premier, of all things. Now, this is our, gonna be where we're gonna be shooting from. A bit grim, especially when you're not wearing waterproof shoes. But let's have a little mooch down. I'll show you the target. In fact, I think, I think we did leave the piece of paper in there for when I was doing the testing. So let's go take a cheeky peek as to hopefully what we have to look forward to. Now, wind-wise, you can see here, the trees are blowing a bit. It's calmed down a bit now, but we do get the occasional rough breeze come through. The thing that's quite handy is with the camera at this position sat here with the target you're going to see the stinging that was blowing so you can see basically what i have to deal with now there's two pellet holes and see i've had to bodge it because the targets i don't i have aren't the right size for that trap that's interesting i've never seen that before we've got one shot high and we've got another i don't know how many to be honest in here obviously these where you can see it's bounced back through the other side of the card there's another shot here if i tilt it like that you can see it's burst through like a chest burster from alien and if we go up here, you can see, for a laugh, one shot almost through the bull. Again, 40 yards, that's where we're gonna be shooting from. That's not too bad at all. So we're gonna get the target rigged up. We'll have the camera down here somewhere. We'll get the Crossman Premier, uh, I'll set right in a minute, the Crossman Premier pellet out and see just how well we can do. So let's pray we can replicate this on camera.
Okay, so accuracy test results. How did we get on? Well, very, well, I am pleased and not pleased. I'm pleased to report that it was mainly as good as we did off camera. I'm not pleased to report that we did get that one flyer. Now I will say I'm 100% confident that's me. I did snap, snag, sorry, I should say, snag the trigger ever so slightly with that shot. We did a little bit more than usual. I believe we put about eight shots through at this time compared to the usual five or six that we normally do. The other thing I'm a little bit annoyed about is what I thought was a 5p coin is actually a 20p coin. Now, for those abroad who don't know, this is a bigger coin than what we usually use. To be honest, I think it's gonna be way too big for what we've got here. I mean, look, I mean, it's still impressive getting a 20 pence group, but I'm quite confident that even a five pence is gonna completely cover that up. In fact, if we put it in the center, even with the flyer, it's pretty much a 20p coin. I'm very confident that's five pence there. That makes it 20 pence. If we just put it there just again to be, just to confirm, you can see there, pretty much 20p group, even with the flyer. So that is stupidly impressive, especially considering you might see it a bit better now. The wind that we've been dealing with hasn't been ideal, but I did manage to pick the shots through it. Now, what I did find quite interesting was a couple of the shots you can see that as the pellet is it's coming down as it's hitting the um, the metal target holder it's obviously bouncing back this way and i could see originally the um uh, the pellet tin dancing around and i thought that's obviously i can't see any holes where that's bouncing through the paper like we usually get but it's clearly busting through somewhere well obviously when i pulled the um the pellet tin out of the way you can see it was covering this up now the thing that i do quite like well, I thought it was quite interesting. I thought, let's see what damage that's done to the pellet tin. And you can see there, the poor old 2-2, where it's not got a great deal of energy after hitting this at 40 yards. Again, this is a UK spec gun. We're limited to 12 foot pounds, and this one's doing around 11-ish, 11-2, 11-1. It's just left a dent. <laughs> so uh, yeah, she's, she's, you could take it a little bit further maybe, but she's definitely, you can see she's running out of puff compared to some of the 177s at that range, which have still got a little bit of zip behind them. But overall, accuracy wise, I'm a very, very happy chappy. I'm so happy with it, in fact, that I'm gonna do another test because frankly, I think we can do a bit more than that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the target up and I'm gonna have a couple of shots. I'm gonna, if I can, go for these bullseyes here and then i might have a little mess around on the card so we'll go one two three four and then we'll go one shot then chase it so one two one two one two and see how we get on basically see what we think now i'll go set the target up now we'll have a few shots and we shall see how we get on Okay, so second accuracy test is over and done with. I could not go for the lower bullseyes because I can't see them. I might have already mentioned it, I'm not sure. When you look at the, um, the target holder we're using, it's got a metal plate that comes up. And obviously, from where I'm shooting from, I can't see these. It sort of covers up to like here. So I'm, I couldn't see them, unfortunately. So what I did in the end, like I said I was gonna do, I just attacked the piece of paper. And you can see up here where there's no, uh, tin to just fight off those little uh, ricochets that you get back. We had a couple trying to come through. Now the first bullseye, we was just ever so slightly low, but still pretty impressive. The second one, we got a little bit more unlucky, shall we say, not lack of skill, just luck, honest. But yeah, overall, we had a couple of shots into the paper. And then like I said, I'll do a chaser shot, trying to see how close we can get. And I don't think there's gonna really be any complaints about that. In fact, these two, Unless something else happened I completely missed, watch the footage back, you might be able to tell me. These two are actually two pellets going through there, or at least that's where I was aiming. To me, that is two pellets through the same hole. Again, watch it back, maybe I completely miss. You guys might, obviously you're gonna get a better look at, it, look at it than what I'm ever gonna get. And then as promised, we had to kill the bullseye, didn't we? So that's another two going straight through the ball. Say what you want about the gun, but I don't think anyone out there would ever say that this is not an accurate rifle. That is bloody tremendous. I nearly cursed then, we won't do that. That is bloody tremendous. Now, I'm not a PCP man. 
I'm a Springer man, and I do think after a while I would get bored of this. But do you know what? Where this is such a unique gun, and not really many people talk about Cometa yet, I was quite enjoying myself today. I will say that. I'll fess up. I've not joined the PCP club, but I did thoroughly enjoy that today. Plus, it was a rare, beautiful day that we had, barring the wind. I don't know. It just it all came together. So that's it for accuracy testing. Next, we've got to wrap it all up and get to our final verdict and see just what we think of the Cometa Lynx, warts and all. Okay, so the final verdict of the Cometa Lynx Mark II SPR. What do we think? It's expensive, is the first thing I'm going to say. It's the most expensive gun, I believe, that we've tested on this channel. 850 quid we stock these for. So it wants to be a bloody good gun, because otherwise I'm going to tear it apart, like some of the other guns where we've picked quite a few niggles with them. Even the guns we love, like the M16 and such, where we said, I don't like that, that's silly, this is silly. With this, I can't really do that. I've got niggles, not major nit nitpicks, it's mainly niggles. The first thing that I'm going to say is the shot count is a bit low. I mean, it might not come out on the camera too well. Like I said, it, the light is getting quite low here. The shot count, you get 80 out of it in 2.2. Um, it's a bit on the low side. Granted, this is the baby Lynx, so it is a little bit unfair to pick on it. This is the hunting gun, basically, designed to be lugged around all day. You can get the Lynx V10, which has got the great big stonking bottle on the front end, which is, according to Cometa's own wording, will give you a thousand shots, depending on the power. Now. I don't know what power that is, so I've not asked them, but I might do. Um, and if we do get to test the Lynx V10, which hopefully we will, I am not going to be sat here putting a thousand pellets through the chronograph, I'll put it that way. Not in one sitting, anyway. But other than that, there's really not a lot I can pick on. The main reason that you buy an expensive air gun like this, number one, obviously the main thing with some people, I will say it, I'll get it out there, it's brand, which obviously Cometa, they're not that massively well known in the UK, they're trying to get out there. You wouldn't buy this for the brand name yet. Yet is what I'm going to say on that. You're going to buy this one for the performance, which again, you can't say about a lot of guns out there where it's all badge and not really a whole lot else. This gun shoots phenomenally. Again, 40 yards, admittedly shooted off the rest, but outdoor conditions. Again, here we was obviously putting one pellet hole down and then chasing it with the next shot. I don't think anyone's going to be complaining about that at all. Obviously, the hole down here you can see is where the pellet has bounced back and where it's obviously hit the plate and then tried coming out the other end. There's not going to be any complaints there. The trigger on it is a genuinely nice unit. It is a multi-way adjustable unit. Is it on Virarc trigger standards? Uh, maybe not quite, but it's really not far behind. It's right there. I mean, I've not adjusted this one. I didn't really feel the need to out the box. For me, it felt pretty much spot on where I'm going to get along with it pretty much all day long. But it is a multi-adjustable unit. There's two screws in, in the blade itself and you've got the, I believe it's travel screw, which is behind the blade, which you can see hopefully there, that little chrome screw sticking out the back. The build quality on this thing is lovely. That stock is gorgeous. It really is. The checkering is 10 out of 10. I like the way you've got the Orion, or the Cometa, sorry, logo on the bottom of the grip there. The adjustable cheek piece is really, really nice. There's no rough edges on there absolutely anywhere, and I like where the bottle gauge is too. That is nicely done. I did have one minor nitpick. It's a nice feature to have the Philpro built into the gun, 110%, I do like that. With my big hands, my index finger sort of goes in there just a little bit, which can feel a little bit odd till you get used to it, but again, it's a nitpick more than anything else. Consistency-wise, I mean, we put 80 shots through it, like we said. Shot count might be low for some. Bear in mind, this is the hunting gun. You're not, it's not designed to do 300 shots per fill. Shot count's a bit low. Consistency, though, is high. I mean, the best on this channel, high. We had, I think it was a standard deviation, even if you include the first hot shot from the fill, which a regulated gun will do, we had a standard deviation sub three. We had a spread of 15 through 80 shots. That's impressive no matter what you're using. The accuracy is impressive no matter what you're using. And I will say now what I've said before in the other videos with the Cometa guns anyway. The guns aren't that well known. I don't know how much advertising Cometa has done. So what I'm going to say is even if you don't get one from us, and you'd be more than welcome if we've got one available, a range gun, what have you, you'd be welcome to come around, put some shots down the range that you can see us at here and see what you think of it, see what one can actually do yourself. But if you know someone with one, you owe it to yourself to give it a go. The Cometa guns, I've got no idea why they're not more popular than what they really are, because 
not only have you got the performance to go with it, but who else out there is going to give you a lifetime warranty on your gun? Because we know the most expensive brands that are the ones that, have got, that everyone's reviewing left, right and centre won't give you it. Cometa will. And that says something. That tells me that they've got a lot of faith in their product. And I like that. I like when you hear people like the way, well, they know how their gun's built. I'll put it that way. That, 10 out of 10. I can't fault that at all. And many thanks, obviously, to ASI for also extending that, that lifetime warranty and meaning that here in the UK, we get that as well. But I'm a happy chappy. I am a very happy chappy. It's a good looking thing. The pictures online make it look hideous. I think they make the bottle look too small and the dimensions just look completely out of whack. In the flesh, hopefully it's coming out a bit better on the review here. In the flesh, it's a damn good looking gun. It really is. But I think that's it for this review. I think hunters are gonna love this gun. Target shooters, as long as you don't mind filling up every 80 shots, which let's be fair, if you shoot an Air Arms S410, that sort of thing, etc., it's no different than that. In fact, you've got about 10, 15 shots more than one of those, so it's not a great deal breaker. Um, obviously, if you wanted more, you just go for the V10, because target shooting is just gonna live its life pretty much on a rest anyway, so it's not gonna be a big concern. I like the gun. I really, really like the gun. It won't be replacing any of my springers anytime soon. I'm still a Springer man, make no mistake. But if I had to choose a PCP, this might be it. But I want to test the V10 and I want to have a little play with the Orion Gold as well because that is Puff Daddy's gun or P Diddy, whatever he calls himself these days. And we've got to get that on camera. But anyways, thanks ever so much for watching. Leave a comment down below if there's anything you want us to change with the next reviews or any guns you want us to take a look at, please let us know. And I do try to reply to every comment I can when we get the time. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll see you next time. I might take a look maybe at the Crowl NPO2 or the Puncher, or we might maybe do one of the Cometa Bullpups and see what they're all about. So you know they don't suit me at all, so it could be a fun review. Anyways, I'll see you next time, and thanks ever so much for watching.